So we're going to finish up P5 today. We're going to continue working in P7. Today. And you're going to take formative tomorrow. Homework that we handed out yesterday. Again, due on September 19th. Okay. Oh, the chapter 3 test. Okay. So we're going to go back and we're going to do those same problems that we did earlier, but now we're going to do them graphically. So if we're starting in the, on the P5 page, we're at example number one, 4x squared minus 8x plus 3 equals 0. We're going to solve this one now by graph. Okay? Okay? So every time that you get the graphing calculators, okay? now this is just me. I do this, but again, I'm a different breed of cat. I'm a little bit on the cuckoo side. I understand that. Okay? I don't trust anything that anybody's done on the calculator before me because it wasn't me. Okay? They may not know what they're doing. So don't trust anything that's on that calculator before you. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on our calculators. And when we turn on our calculators, we're going to double tap the on button. Okay? So we double tap the on button, and we should get a screen that looks similar to this. Yes? Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we are not scratch pad people. Nothing good comes in the scratch pad because nothing ever, you just don't use it. Use document. You're going to want to start a new document. Now, some of you might get a message that says, do you want to save what is on there before? No, you don't need to save what's on there before. Okay? You just want to start a new document that puts you at a page that looks like this now. Okay? From this, because we're solving with graphing, we are going to then say add graph. Now, I got two different ways to do this. I could use the keypad up here. And I could go down one and then hit enter and go, it takes me to add graph. Or if I want to be the shortcut way, I could just simply press the number two and it will take me to a graph. Okay? So it doesn't matter which one, but you want to add a graph. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to graph this function that we just solved for yesterday. Okay? And so that function, again, was 4x squared minus 8x, right? Yes, minus 8x. Okay, now here's a kicker. This is the minus, the subtraction function. This is the negative key. They are different. They do not mean the same thing. So if you want to go minus 8x, you need to use the minus key, minus 8x, and then was it plus 3? No. Yes? yes? Okay, plus 3. <laughs> then when you hit enter, the graph should appear. Okay. Now. We can do a couple of different things here. Okay. We can zoom in on that graph by going into menu, window zoom, and then zoom in is number three. We can do that. Or what you can do is you can drag your mouse over to uh, one of the axes, and then you can move it around. You can stop anywhere in the middle and you can move it around, but if you stop on an axis, come on now. Might have to go to the computer. Oops, yeah, I've got some breaks. I gotta go control. If you ever get in a spot where you just did what I did, control Z is just it's like a computer. Okay, control Z makes you go back. Control Z does that. So notice how I got the hand here now. Okay, if I take that hand. And I grab on to that's not doing it for me. It's easier on yours because you can just grab on to 
um, one of the axes and you can slide it in and out. Okay? But what we want to find, we want to know where this is equal to zero. So because we've got a function, we've got two options here now. We could put in a second function of just zero and find the two intersection points. Or we can analyze our graph. So under menu, we can analyze our graph and we can find all of these things. We want to find the zeros. We want to find where those zeros are. Now, what this is going to do is you're going to get a range of values. Okay? And it's hard for me to show on here because so you slide your you slide your the cursor to the left and then you click it and then once you slide it to the right now what the calculator is doing it's looking for all the zeros in that shaded area okay and when it finds one it's going to literally tell you there's a zero right there and so then you click it again, and it shows you what the zero is. The downfall with this is it only shows you one at a time. So then you have to rinse, lather, and repeat that process. Menu, analyze graph, zero, and you go for the other side. Now, I've been working with the TI Inspires for numerous years. Do not do this. Do not try and get that cursor as close to that zero as you possibly can. Does you no good. Okay? It's going to tell you the zero in that range whether or not you select the entire graph or not. Okay? You don't need to narrow in on that on that zero. Let the calculator do the work for you. Don't try and get it right in, as tight as you can because you might miss it. Okay? So let the calculator do the work for you. And those are the two solutions that we found the other day. One half and three half. This one, I think, is on the back side of, yeah, down there at the bottom, okay? It's an absolute value equals a quadratic and all that fun stuff, okay? So when we have a function that looks like this, so there's our function, okay? When it looks like that, We've got two options as to how we actually graph it. Okay? So the first way that we can do this is we can we can go right over the top of this graph if we want to. I'm fine with that. How you do that is you hit tab, and by hitting tab, that's going to allow you. Oops, see, mine's acting goofy now here again. Hit tab. There you go. You hit tab, and that's going to open up another function that you can put on that same graph. Okay? Now, if you scroll up one, you're back to your other function that you just graphed, 4x squared minus 8x plus 3. Okay? And you can clear that out, or you can delete it out, whichever one. You can go delete and hold it down and delete it all the way out, or you can just hit control delete, and it will clear it out. Then what you need to do is you need to put in the new function. And the new function is the absolute value of 2x minus 3. Absolute value is found in this key right there. This key right there has all of our fun mathematical symbols in it. And one of those should be, it just happens to be on mine, it's right up here. It's the absolute value symbol. Put it in there, and then we're going to go 2x 
minus 3. And when I hit enter, I should get a graph that looks like a V. There is 2x minus 3. It has a 0 at 1.5 comma 0 because it's told us that from, from what we did before. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the other side function it as a second function right in there with it. So I'm going to hit tab, and then that side was going to be x squared. And when I hit enter, it's going to overlay those two right on the same graph. Now, what we need to look for is we need to look for where those two functions are equal. So when I go to analyze my graph, I'm not going to look for a zero anymore. I'm going to look for an intersection point. And that intersection point, then, again, I don't need to be exact with it. There are two of them. There's one. See, it doesn't show them both, so I, but I can go all the way over there, or it shows me one or the other, okay? And so I have to do it once to find this upper one, and then I have to do it twice to find the lower one. So the intersections... The solutions, if you will, let me actually give me a pause here. Let me get this back onto here. So the intersections are actually at x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. Okay? Actually, like the points of intersection are at negative 3, comma 9 and 1, comma 1. But if we were solving this one, We would say x equals negative 3 and positive 1. Fix that. I don't like that. Now, the other way of doing that exact same problem is instead of graphing two functions and finding the intersection point, we can solve this function. We can move everything to, to one side. We can set it equal. Oops. We can set it equal to zero. So we could go here either x squared minus the absolute value of 2x minus 3, or we could go the absolute value of 2x minus 3, then minus x squared. Either one of those, depending on which way you move everything, if you get it 0 equals or equals 0, doesn't matter. And then when you go to the graph for that one, then if I wanted to start a brand new graph, I could go control doc and I'm going to add a page. There's a brand new graph. It just starts a brand new graph, keeps everything else on the other one. But so then we could go x squared minus absolute value of 2x minus 3. 
Now here on this particular graph, because I solved it for zero, when I analyze it, I'm going to analyze it for the zeros. And there are my two zeros. I would get the same if I went absolute value of 2x minus 3, then minus x squared. Same. Either. Still gives me zeros of negative three and positive one. Questions, comments, concerns, clarifications. Okay. Now I think we jump into um, E seven. Example number one. So now here, graphically, what we're going to do, and we've got two x minus one and five. Graphically, what we're going to do, you can go over the top of one of them. You can start a new one. It doesn't matter to me what you do. I'm going to start a brand new one, and then we get all of the colors. Okay? Okay. Control doc gets you to a new page, lets you put in a new graph. Okay? Here, when we have two different ones, we want to, we have to graph them separately. Okay? So we would go absolute value of 2x minus 1. And that's it. Okay. Then I'm going to hit tab, and that's going to, I'm just going to graph 5, because that's the other side. One side in each of the two. 5, enter, boom. There we go. Okay. Then what I'm going to do, so that I can see it a little bit better, I'm going to grab any open space that I can, and I'm just going to pull it down, and that's going to allow me to see... more of the graph because I want to see it up. I don't want to see it necessarily down. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find those intersection points. So find me those intersection points, please. So what you should be looking at is you should be looking at a V, in my case, because I just of how many windows I have open, the V part, the absolute value part, is the green part. Okay? And then the other part is the orange part. Okay? And so what my problem is asking me is it is asking me when is green bigger than orange. Well, green is bigger than orange over here and over here. Right? So the interval notation for that would be negative infinity all the way up to but not including negative 2 union then with not including 3 all the way out to positive infinity if we would have been looking for less than 
then we would have been doing all of the green parts underneath the orange ball. With me? You try this one. Solve this one graphically, please. Go for it. All right, here we go. So we're going to do our graph. Let's get it. Right on this way. Yeah, yeah. So let me show you a little shortcut, too. So, like, we just did a problem very similar to this one. So if I hit tab, and then I, see, mine gets all goofy the first time I hit tab. If I hit tab, and I scroll up one, I had five. Well, I can change that five to a six. Shabam. And then notice all my intersection points already changed to go along with it. That's cool. If I hit tab again, I go up two this time. Now I'm into that one. And now I've got to come up with this x minus 5 all over 4 thing. So let me show you. Come on now. Let me show you a way to make fractions. There's a quick and easy way to make fractions. It's called control divide. It makes the fraction for you. It makes it nice and pretty. And then on top, you can go x minus 5. And on the bottom, you can go 4. And then when you hit enter, Shabam, there they are, but row, row, they're not on the graph. Or are they? They are, but they're just not visible. So what we can do is we can do one of two things. We could grab in an open area, and we could slide all the way out until we actually finally find one and then find it. Or what we can do is we can grab on to one of the axes and scroll it down a little bit, we have to click and hold on it, and then we can scroll it down, and it'll shrink the, it'll bring the, bring it in. Or the other thing that we can do is we can go in and we can adjust our window settings. We need to be out farther on the X's. So let's say we need to go out to negative 25, and we need to go out to positive 25. And when we do that, okay, well, I get the negative 25 works, but I still need to go farther out. Well, let's go back in, back into window settings. This one needs to go out to, let's say, 35. There it is. Boom, we found it. Now we can, again, multiple different ways of, of doing it. Analyze graph, intersection. There it is. Menu. Analyze graph, intersection, there it is. So this one would have x solutions of negative 19 and 29. So we'd have to add those in because that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve this one. Because this was an equals one, right? Oh no, nope, I lied. Tap the brakes, Linsmeyer. Whoa, this isn't a this is an inequality type one. So we need to be above or below the orange line. Above or below the orange line? Below. So that would be this stuff right in here would be that one. Okay. So this would be if we were solving. But because we are the inequality, the answer that we would give then would be from including negative 19 all the way up to and including positive 29. Try this one, please. Oh, it's like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So what do we have? We had x squared minus, oops, I did the wrong one, minus 3x minus 10. Through there. And we want to know where that is greater than 0. Okay. Well, we can find those zeros. by analyzing our graph, finding those zeros. Okay. We want it to be, whoa, went too far. We want it to be greater than zero. That means we want above. So the above would be from negative infinity all the way out to negative 2, not included, union with 5, all the way up to dr. Yes? Now, because I like you guys, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. There is a graphing calculator problem tomorrow. So you will need to know how to do that for tomorrow. Six. Okay. What do you mean? It's on everything that we've learned so far. Is there what? Yes, because it's formative. Because it's formative. Formative, correctable. 